I'm here today with Amy Brown Hughes, Assistant Professor of Theology at Gordon College. Um, Amy, if I may, uh, so glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. So we're here in uh, New Haven for a conversation about the future of theology. Mm -hmm. It's a small topic. Let's do it. <laughs> um, and uh, we're thinking about, we'll talk a bit, I'm sure, about uh, some things that are maybe wrong or troubling or kind of threats uh, that theology is facing. But let's start, let's start on the positive side. Okay. Um, from, from your point of view um, and, and where you sit in your particular uh, institutional location and uh, disciplinary location, um, what's, what's right in theology these days? What's going well? Oh, I think, there's a, I think there's a lot going well, actually. I think we live in a really amazing time, and I'm really glad to be a, a theologian at this point. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm seeing, especially on the student side, uh, a lot more you know, felt need mm -hmm. for sort of working through their faith, not just picking up uh, Old Testament, New Testament classes and going, okay, I'm done, you know, moving on. Um, but really uh, a, a felt need and uh, to connect with God and with theology personally, but also connect, they're making the connection now much more than I've experienced in the past with, oh, this actually has to matter mm -hmm. in something that I do, whether I'm an accountant or a physical therapist or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so they're starting to make that connection, and they're actually starting to ask that of theologians now. So in my classes, students are starting to say things like, um, what does theology say about this, about the refugee crisis, about this or that? I, it, which is really, that is really encouraging to me, um, because it shows me that, um, that we're starting to have a, a different kind of conversation about what theology is. It's sort of becoming unlatched from sort of an up here conversation and having more of a, oh, this is more of a Christian conversation, um, broadly speaking. Uh, so on that level, it's very encouraging. I also see uh, some churches that I've been involved in. When I was back in Illinois, I had, was part of a very under-resourced inner city church. Um, and I said, hey, do you want me to teach 10 weeks on the Trinity? And Whereas several years ago, they would have been a little bit sketchy about that, like, ooh, that sounds really out there, which is kind of funny. Um, but now there's a real hunger for that. So I'm seeing it kind of across the board as far as, as a theologian, that the stuff that I do is not only mattering pedagogically in the, in the academy for students, um, but also out with the church as well, that it's starting to be something that they're starting to like want books and they want things recommended to them. Hey, what do you recommend on this? Um, and I'm starting to see the academy starting to make some of those connections as well, even amongst each other. Hey, mm -hmm. let's have a conversation about Methodius of Olympus, in my opinion, you know, that, hey, let's look at how he connects all of these things together and why would that matter? Why should we even talk about him? Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah. is, that is encouraging. So both the kind of uh, heady intellectual kind of mm -hmm. big questions and even maybe uh, rather specific, uh, I, was, I was about to say esoteric, right? Like <laughs> these, yeah. these very particular kind mm -hmm. of historical questions, but then trying to connect, there's an impulse then from students yeah. to connect that mm -hmm. to real life, global questions, political questions. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's, that, that is really encouraging. Well, I, and what's beautiful about that is that, is that they want, they, they actually don't want me just to sort of stay uh, they don't want just their questions answered. They want, they actually do want to know some of the, the details and some of the debt. They, they want to have things to hang their hats on, um, which is encouraging. So my research, you, know, you always want as a scholar to have your research actually matter in what you teach <laughs> and, and not teaching and research being mm -hmm. so divorced. But I'm starting to see those things come together a lot, mm -hmm. which helps me as a scholar that when I write things, um, to have a sort of a broader audience sort of subconsciously in my mind now than maybe I used to. Hmm. All right, so that's some of what's encouraging, mm -hmm. what's going well. Um, what are the challenges? What's, uh, what's, what's hard in theology these days, or what, are the th what, what threatens it? I think some of the, uh, I think there's still some of the issues. I mean, uh, Mark Noel talked about the scandal mm -hmm. of the evangelical mind, you know, from my perspective being in an evangelical institution. I, we're, st we're still having that conversation a little bit, sort of mm -hmm. some of the anti-intellectualism thing, and associating theology sort of gets sh shunted into that category, sort of automatically mm -hmm. as being um, 
sort of church level uh, all the way across the board as being uh, not sort of esoteric and mm -hmm. kind of out there and not really making those connections. Um, or not connecting specifically with scripture, that theology mm. is something other than the scripture. Mm. It's something kind of dangerous and risky that we deal with here. So there's still some of that, um, that kind of, it's not as overt as it used to be, which is nice, but there's still some of that untangling that mm. is happening. Um, and so there's that. And I also, uh, I also see, see some issues with um, going off into our specific corners mm -hmm. and sort of holding, like white knuckling mm -hmm. these particular mm -hmm. perspectives because um, uh, for certain values that we hold, whether it's politically or socially, um, and starting to make seeing theology as sort of a way to put ourselves against someone else. Mm -hmm. I have more theology on my side or mm -hmm. more on this side, and so therefore I'm more right. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, there's some uh, agonistic mm -hmm. aspects of that that I find troubling, uh, mm -hmm. to say the least. You talked a lot about kind of the interaction with the church and for Christian students, and mm -hmm. what about in the broader in the broader mm -hmm. culture? Does what does Christian theology have to say these days in our in our in our pluralistic world? Or maybe I can make that more particular for you. If, when you meet someone yeah. on an airplane, right, yeah. um, and they ask you what you do. <laughs> um, how do you answer and what kind of conversations do you end up in? Oh my goodness, that's, that's, that's so funny because um, I'm an extrovert and, and no, I don't make people talk on planes, but if they do that's want good. to, I appreciate that's okay. That, <laughs> I, I never want to talk on planes, but that's good. But I'll be reading something or grading papers and I probably about 75% of the time, somebody will be like, what are you doing? Um, and I tell them that I'm a theologian and I often get questions about Oh, you know, what do you think of this really weird scripture that popped in my head? And, and so that's always interesting. But oftentimes um, it allows them to actually ask somebody that they sort of have something that it, it strikes a nerve. Mm -hmm. And so I actually feel like theology can be a really hospitable place for people to uh, actually access Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, where there are some big ideas and some values there um, that we can talk about. Well, how do you come to consensus mm -hmm. on, on diverse topics? How mm -hmm. do you bring in people from various ways and have them mm -hmm. sort of work through some big idea like how to think about who God is? Like that's a huge question, who is God? Mm -hmm. You can't start from a place, you can't start from a narrow place on that. So I think methodologically theology actually has a lot to offer mm -hmm. there. Um, I'm thinking like maybe more specific, like something the like theological anthropology mm. is, is uh, a place where it's really interesting work on, uh, from a theological perspective, on the image of God, how humans relate to, how humans relate to God, how humans relate within themselves psychologically, mm. how humans relate to each other, mm. how humans relate mm. to the earth, mm -hmm. so, uh, um, that anthropological perspective from a theological framework. Mm -hmm. And then thinking, okay, uh, for instance, like, um, like the United Nations Global Goals, for instance, like mm -hmm. gender equality, no poverty, these different goals, sort of worldwide conversations about how humans can flourish, largely speaking. Mm -hmm. So how can theology, with how we think about humanity, how can we participate in those conversations? And I think that sort of requiring ourselves to think, to go, can we actually participate in that conversation? And say, yes, I think we can, so how can we do that? Like, what can we bring to bear on the conversation of eradicating poverty in the world? How can we participate? Mm -hmm. And I think challenging ourselves to have, uh, to have that reflex to, mm -hmm. uh, as part of our theological exercise, or theologizing in general, mm -hmm. um, I think can allow for uh, areas of common ground that we might, not ha might have disagreements on other places, but mm -hmm. can come around specific issues that are very mm -hmm. human. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're, in particular, a, an historical mm -hmm. theologian. Mm -hmm. um, what you just described, the interest from your students and even what yeah. you're just talking about now, this kind of engagement with contemporary mm -hmm. cultural issues. Mm -hmm. I think but you study things that are centuries old, right? Yeah. Uh, more than a millennium yeah. uh, uh, old. Um, how do you, what, would, uh, what would your field look like? Mm -hmm. um, Patristics or ancient Christianity or historical theology, how mm -hmm. you want to, how you term it, um, what would that look like if it were oriented around these big questions of human flourishing or what the what 
the question is a kind of the vision of, of a good of a good life. What I what I find so beautiful about uh, early Christianity is is there we have some resources for thinking about um, theology in sort of a more expansive mm -hmm. way, where for them they talked about theology and philosophy in the same breath, mm -hmm. and really had they didn't have sort of the, the disciplines mm -hmm. specificity that we have now, and there was a real sense of this is our life, this, everything is at stake on this. <laughs> um, and and to, to preserve the martyr tradition and go, okay, these people gave their lives for this, you know, why does that matter? Uh, I think thinking about theology as being sort of discourse among the church, mm -hmm. largely speaking, that that discourse can have conversation points worldwide. I think uh, in early Christianity I found the uh, some beautiful resources for us to figure out sort of how to do that in a lot of ways. Um, to pull up a chair for them, uh, metaphorically speaking, and sort of understand their context and think about that and go, oh, you have some very interesting ways that get around some of our more modern hang-ups. Mm -hmm. uh, to give an example, mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I really spent a lot of time on Gregory of Nyssa, fourth century mm -hmm. Trinitarian. Um, he's also very interesting. He writes on all sorts of different topics. Uh, he's a lot. He's kind of hard to pin down on a lot of things. Exactly what he thought about things, which makes him a lot of fun. Um, but he has some the ways that he thinks about who God is have some really great relevance, especially for modern Trinitarian discussions on gender and God and how uh, uh, how we think through some of the um, specifically the feminist critique of how. Uh, how traditional theology has worked through that. And, and Gregory has some really interesting um, ways of thinking through some of those issues about how he understands the Trinity that allows us to access, maybe from the tradition, um, uh, some ways to answer some of those critiques in a constructive way mm -hmm. that we might not have had before if we'd not ever encountered Gregory of Nyssa. I've run into that mm -hmm. on several occasions. Mm -hmm. um, and allowing us to engage scripture in maybe a way that um, it is different than we're used to. I think it actually allows us to practice mm. some of that um, expansive theology that can allow mm. us to be hospitable to different perspectives within Christianity and without. Mm. So that's that's beautiful. And as uh, as you've been talking about the whole time, engage with questions mm -hmm. for today and the kind of the life of faith and uh, and it is a, an inspiring kind of. Picture that we get from the ancient world, even philosophy, right? In the mm -hmm. ancient world, uh, Hado and, and Foucault insisted, mm -hmm. and Martha Nussbaum mm -hmm. all insisted, it, it, this was a way of life. That, yeah. This is the way we ought to think about this. But that's not always the way the, the, the modern academy works. <laughs> There's no. an assumption that's quite different. I think, especially for scholars in historical fields, especially maybe for younger scholars, mm -hmm. um, having kind of theological interests. Um, can be uh, a liability, um, and you, you talk about that a bit mm -hmm. in terms of kind of disciplinary identity and how we mm -hmm. navigate uh, academia. Um, how have you how have you navigated that yourself, or what have you learned kind of in the in the process? That's interesting. Um, it's it's as a as an early Christian scholar, you know, we, my society is the North American Patristic Society, and um, it's a smaller society, and they tend to be very very friendly towards mm -hmm. graduate students and new scholars. I think is really helpful, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I sort of took a, I, I didn't realize that kind of advantage, mm -hmm. um, and then until I realized that other people don't have that mm -hmm. specific situation. But I had some of the major scholars in the field who very keenly would read my work and comment on it, like mm -hmm. the people whose books are on my shelves, mm -hmm. who would be considered giants in the field, mm -hmm. who were very just um, open or from very different perspectives, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. were really willing, and one in particular. Um, Read uh, read a piece of mine, an article a few years ago, um, and she's more of a history of Christianity sort of person, so more historical and I'm sort of theological. And this was allowing me to sort of navigate. I wasn't quite sure because my master's is in history of Christianity, mm -hmm. I was a theologian. How do those two things work? And I sent her this piece, and she wrote back to me, and she said, "You need to make a decision." She said. You, you seem to be on the fence here as far as whether you are doing historical work or whether you're doing theological work. And I kind of was thinking that she was going to say, like, you know, theological work, blah, blah, blah. But she's like, 
if you're going to do theological work, do it. Like, just mm -hmm. really do it. Commit to it. Mm -hmm. And hearing that from someone who mm -hmm. doesn't have that perspective mm -hmm. in my field and saying, hey, there's, there's room for this here was mm -hmm. hugely influential for me. So I think that there's actually some, some of that has a lot to do with the nature of the scholars in the field, mm -hmm. of how they think about the field mm -hmm. and, and what it looks like. And I think that I don't know, historical theology is interesting because I sort of get to play in the mm -hmm. historical field and mm -hmm. in the, the theological field. Mm -hmm. um, and the credibility there on both ends of the spectrum and, and having the opportunity to work with very historical scholars, sort of more mm -hmm. properly speaking, and they tend to be very gracious about those moves as long as you make it very clear that you're making that move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I found, I, I, I think because of being in, in, in that kind of environment, has allowed me to to have the uh, the luxury mm -hmm. to work through that in a way that um, otherwise I might not have. Like sending, you know, I've sent things to publishers before. I, you know, very young as a graduate student, and oh, we don't really publish that kind of thing. And who knows? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, how often do you actually know? Does mm -hmm. somebody tell you, oh, if you want to publish this kind mm -hmm. of thing, you go here. They don't mm -hmm. like theology over here. They like mm -hmm. history over here. So I was I was very fortunate to have. Um, both in the society and mm -hmm. in my program, a lot of guidance on how mm -hmm. to do that, mm -hmm. um, and which has been good. Mm. So, um, I talked a bit about the kind of um, broader pluralistic culture that mm -hmm. we're that we're in. Um, the number of uh, kind of uh, folks that would check the box of Christian in America is, is going down. Mm -hmm. um, it's already quite low in Europe. Um, and, and for better and largely for worse, that's uh, kind of a lot of the academic circles we run in are, yeah. are in those two cultural contexts. Um, in that kind of cultural context, uh, why should a young person study, study theology? What would, what, do you, what would you say or what do you say to young people who are thinking, about that as a as a possible kind of step forward, um, are they resigning themselves to you know obscurity <laughs> and poverty? <laughs> you know, well, well, that's poverty. granted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think it kind of depends on what they think theology is for, hmm. uh, because uh, working in a liberal arts undergraduate institution, hmm. when they want to pick up a theology minor, for hmm. instance, I really encourage students of any particular hmm. major to do that because. I think that the study of theology is is a tool a kit that they're going to have throughout their lives as Christians, and I want them to feel like that they can actually participate in their church conversations and 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 not just automatically freak mm -hmm. out when somebody disagrees with them. Mm -hmm. So on that kind of level, students who would study just theology in mm -hmm. general, kind of in that sort of environment. Now, like a a, a larger sort of graduate school or beyond that kind of perspective. Um, I actually think that there's a great future for, especially uh, where Christianity is growing mm -hmm. in the majority mm -hmm. world, right. and you know, coming from a charismatic background, um, like this is maybe this is a little bit more present for me, just in how um, and understanding the value of, uh, you know, my back, you know, my tradition is Azusa Street, is mm -hmm. the sort of real diverse like. The Holy Spirit is a great equalizer, sort mm -hmm. of, and a very non-elitist perspective. And I think um, seeing theology as 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 sort of beautiful opportunity to see the church um, in areas growing in different kinds of contexts mm -hmm. and seeing what they come up with, mm -hmm. um, I think is a really beautiful opportunity to enliven us mm -hmm. in uh, in the in Europe and and the U.S. and et cetera, to. Uh, we see Christianity again for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that uh, theology often allows for access uh, to discussions that they might not be able to, if you don't have as much of uh, perhaps a historical or a language situation with working very directly mm -hmm. with the biblical texts mm -hmm. and such. So uh, theology is a little bit wilder, mm -hmm. a little bit messier. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I think that that's actually mm -hmm. Uh, an opportunity for future. So as long as students or people who are interested in that understand sort of where theology is mm -hmm. fitting and moving mm -hmm. and how it's fitting in, in a global context, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that it's yeah, a good thing. Mm -hmm.
Oh, Amy, uh, I look forward to uh, this weekend's conversations and uh, so glad that you're, that you're able to be here with us. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.